Welcome to the Baldoyle Training Centre podcast. On this podcast, we'll explore the courses on offer at the training centre, including off-site training opportunities. We will meet the trainees from various courses and the training centre staff and management and find out more about what it's like to enrol on a course at the Baldoyle Training Centre. In this episode, I will speak with the centre's area manager, Ken Siri, about the history of the Baldoyle Training Centre. I speak with John Tewitt, who completed an aircraft spray painting course before taking up employment at Dublin Airport. Leon Harding discusses the recruitment process of the centre. We hear from Erin Maughan and Kathleen Medill from the pharmacy sales course. And finally, I chat with Ross and Leon, who are both apprentices on the electrical instrumentation course. So first things first, I met with area manager of the Baldoyle Training Centre, Ken Siri. I began by asking him about the history of the Baldoyle Training Centre. Baldoyle Training Centre opened in the early 80s and uh, it was formerly an industrial building. So at the time, people would have thought, you know, we're going to put some industrial related uh, activity in here. And training for industry was very big in the 80s. and We had the IDA working on that for us. And essentially, this was a ANCO building, and ANCO was associated with uh, industry. So the building here was placed right in the centre of where they expected industry to evolve. And over time, we, we changed. ANCO was merged with a couple of other different agencies and became FOSS. And FOSS pretty much did the same services here in the Baldoyle Training Centre, very much focused on all of the industry activity around the area and tried to make training very relevant to the industry all through the 80s and 90s and 2000s. Then in 2013, uh, FOSS was dissolved and we became part of the Dublin Dunleary Education and Training Board, DDL ETB for short, if that's short at all, I don't know. And uh, what we've got then is uh, three training centres as part of that organisation and Baldoyle Training Centre, which is on the north side, looks after all of the Fingal area. And what we do for them is uh, pretty much all of the training related activities. So it's very different from education in that education tends to be uh, classroom based and a focus on knowledge and learning about things in a theoretical uh, respect. Now, every uh, all learning has some elements of theory and practical, but for training, which is what we do, we focus a lot more on the practical skills than the theoretical skills, even though there are both on it. So that's what kind of distinguishes the services that that we do. We very much focused on, you know, real work situations, practical experience, and how to do things in that respect. And that's taken us to this point in 2018. How large an operation is it? We do about 2,000, just probably slightly over 2,000 people per year come through our different training programs. So we have some people who are on the apprenticeship and we have quite a lot of apprenticeship here, electrical, electrical instrumentation, construction plant and motor. Then we have night training courses, which we run three times a year, uh, three semesters. We have uh, in-centre training, which is where people come into our facility here in Baldoyle. And then we also have uh, training that we project out to all of the different parts of Fingal. So we might run something up in Balbriggan or down in Blanchardstown. And we provide the facilities and the training much closer to where people live. How does Baldoyle Training Centre fit into the overall training needs of the country? You know, it's a good question. So there's there's a lot of training provision at the moment. So everybody would be familiar with primary and post-primary education and up to your leave and cert. And then a lot of people decide uh, after that point whether they would go towards a more practical occupation like apprenticeship or uh, to go to university and do a third level degree so where we sit is in between the leaving cert and the workplace really so there's lots of occupations and jobs out there uh, and they're in huge demand at the moment for people to pretty much go in with a basic education but with some skills that they've developed 
So the types of skills could be as broad as hairdressing to retail skills to barista skills. And they don't really need a third level education in order for somebody to be successful at them. So our job is to try and bring people from where they finish secondary school into the workplace. Uh, So progression out of our programs is not to third level or to degree courses, but it's into jobs and into work and into practical applications like that. That's not to say that, you know, people's careers in the future wouldn't fit very well with higher levels of education. But there's lots of people that don't really need to go immediately to third level. And those are the ones that we want to come here. And trainees can start at any age. What should people be thinking about in terms of coming to Baldwell Training Centre? Like, is, is it for them? How do, how do they progress to finding out what you've got and getting on to a course? Yeah, so the, there's lots of information. The, sometimes the best thing is to actually talk to us, which is uh, something that we encourage. And we ask people to give us a call or to, to pop into the training centre here and we can talk to them. But um, if they want to find out details online, we have a Facebook page, which is Baldoyle Training Centre. And that usually has a lot of information on there. And then there's a Baldoyle uh, Training Centre websites and uh, we can use those to uh, list out all the different classes that we have. There's a very good website called fetchcourses.ie which is a useful one because it covers all of the services not just ours but if you're interested in particular programs that's probably the best way to go. And it's for people who might be between Leaving Cert and the workplace but is it also for businesses and workplaces to use the training centre to train people who are on the job? Yeah, very much so. So we've been working for the last uh, little while on trying to develop our connections with industry and to try and work with employers to help them to see the benefits of training their staff. So uh, we, we lost that in the recession. And people were very much focused on, you know, saving money and making sure that they survived in business. And training tends to suffer a little bit in that kind of environment. So now we've come out of that and it's, uh, you know, really important to re-emphasize uh, the need to continually engage staff and to develop them and to train them. So we've been working with a number of employers and they've, you know, been sending in their staff and we've been upskilling them for them. So things like um, basic skills, customer services, uh, we have specific barista training here for one employer. And also we do kind of frontline management development programs. And we hope to expand that out to more technical areas. And a huge benefit for employers is the retention in staff. So when you invest in people and you train them at the right time with the right technique and you reward that training, they're far more likely to stay with you. And that's a really important thing today because when somebody leaves, it's very costly to replace them. And it's becoming really difficult to find people to replace them. So holding on to staff is critical and training is a really good strategy to help people do that. Some might be surprised that you offer these services for businesses, but it probably makes perfect sense. But they are also one of your key funders. That's right, yeah. Our, uh, the, the money for uh, the training that we do comes from a couple of different places. We get, um, there's there's the National Employment Levy, which all employers pay into, and that's used to help upskill and train people. Uh, we get money from the European Social Fund, and uh, that gives a significant portion of our money towards training people who are unemployed. And we also have a general exchequer funding. So all of those funds come in together and we try to offer as broad a service to all of those people that pay in that money to support the training that we give. And speaking of money, if you're in receipt of a social welfare payment, you have no restrictions on coming on to a course, really. Your payments aren't going to be affected. Uh, Typically not. Um, There there may be some cases where there are uh, some alterations and people should always check with their 
client services officer in the DEASP uh, before they come in to make sure that their money doesn't change. Because sometimes when you're on a short uh, amount of unemployment and you move or transition into longer unemployment, your money does change as a result of that, depending on your entitlements. But the bottom line is that when you come here, you maintain your appropriate and entitled payments when you're an unemployed person. So the message today is that you're open for business and check out what Baldoyle Training Centre has to offer. Very much so. And we'd be delighted to look at opportunities with businesses and look at opportunities with people to find out what, what's needed. And we're constantly adapting and changing the courses we offer to make them as relevant as possible. Ken Siri, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm joined by Leon Harding, who is a recruitment officer here in Baldwell Training Centre, and one of the ex-trainees uh, here, John Chute, who, uh, John, tell us about yourself. You haven't always worked in spray painting, have you? Well, I, well, I took a break for a few years working for Harvey Norman, Dundalk. Prior to that, I was in the military. But uh, on and off, over the last 40 years, I have been spray painting, uh, i.e. cars, limousines, things. But this is the first time in aircraft. And would you have been spraying in the army then? Uh, partially, yes. Spraying some of the vehicles, like the uh, Land Rovers, things like that, armoured vehicles, you know, just general work. No. Did you get any tours away of the army? I did. It was overseas on a few occasions, yes, uh, in Middle East Lebanon, with the uh, Unifil. And and then a spell in Harvey Norman for about 10 years, and then that job, they kind of wound down a bit uh, up in Dundalk, did they? Yeah, that, that store itself closed. I was withdrawn from Dundalk, so I was left between, between, between two worlds, you know. Uh, so I decided to make a choice while waiting to get employment. I went back to education and done my leave insert and completed it. So you hadn't had the leave insert before this? No, I left school at 14 and a half, just my intercert, and went into my apprenticeship. And that was the last time for nearly 40 years before I returned to education. So. With very good intention then you went to get that leave insert because you knew you'd be chasing jobs and you'd be competing with other people. How did you find that kind of journey back into education? Well, well to be honest, uh, from being truthful, I actually went to walk it three to four times and only thanks to my partner and her stubbornness that I actually went in and completed it because it was a very, very scary situation. You know, it's such a long time being away from education that I felt I felt out of place well, uh, especially being amongst a lot of younger people who were probably repeating their leaving or only had a few years left school and decided to go back. I had a lifetime. So, um, yes, it was scary. But uh, to be honest, if I'm being truthful now, I would advise it to anybody. I would, give, I would say do it because it's probably one of the best things you'll ever do. Um, there's so much help out there to, to achieve it. And uh, it makes you feel good as well. Just, you take you wonder, like, you know, you're, you're doing it now because you want to do it as opposed to when you were a kid you had to do it so it's a much more enjoyable uh, process and experience so I would recommend it so you're then have the leave insert and you are got the CV and you're looking for jobs and you find that you need to add on a little extra training I'm going to go to Leon Harding now and talk to him about the course that the Baldoyle Training Centre set up that you applied for and I will get back to you on how you did that application and, and how the course was for you uh, Leon tell us uh, you, you got a an opportunity to set up a course uh, in spray painting that that a first for Baldoyle? Yeah, the course was developed by IAC. They were a leading um, aviation company. The course was developed, to, I suppose, to give people the skills um, and and aptitudes required to work successfully as an aircraft spray painter. Um, IAC, you know, they, they, they were taking on um, aircraft spray painters, but they they needed to have this, those skills um, to give. I suppose job seekers and and people interested in developing a career in spray painting, the skills required and the qualification required so that they could then go on and and find employment as aircraft spray painters. You ran this once and then it was successful. You're you're running it a second time at the moment. Uh, So how many people go through the course each time? There was 14 on the first occasion, 14 on the second one. And a, a large amount of the people, I, I don't have the exact figures, but a, a huge proportion of those that had finished the course and achieved the qualification went on to be employed then by IAC as aircraft spray painters. And they're employed currently with IAC in Dublin Airport. I'm going to go back to John and ask, how did you find out about this course? 
Uh, it was a friend of mine, an ex-army buddy of mine, uh, actually sent the link from Baldoyle Training Centre last... It was probably the uh, end of April, beginning of May last year. Uh, knew my background in spraying and reckoned I might be interested in it. I knew I was after in, in, in the search employment. And I contacted Leon through private mail because I wasn't just sure of what way to go about it. And he gave me all the relevant information and a, a, a code number that you pass on to your caseworker if you're in the job seeking department. And it was a process that took possibly three to four working days. And then after that, within the, within one week, I was attending an open day in IAC in Dublin Airport with Bald Oil Training Centre and uh, hands-on interviews on that day. And then I was just waiting for the selection course. And then thankfully, I was one of the selected. And then started on the 26th of June 2017 in Dublin Airport. No doubt it's something that's done in conjunction with Bald Oil and up in the airport. So is there a mix of being at, at both places or is it mostly done up at the airport? Well, on our course, it was all it was from from the get go. It was done in Dublin Airport uh, through the vetting. We were waiting uh, while that was going on, the vetting for our passes and our BSAT training, apron training, etc. Um, we were uh, trained by one trainee officer from IAC and one from uh, ETB. He would he he done the theory side of it of the health and safety, and then all the chemicals and the uh, the safety issues and techniques and things like that and then the practical would be was done by the other uh, man himself from LUC he would actually teach people the techniques of uh, applying uh, the spray the, pr- the, the primers paints clear coats etc so how the techniques in sanding stripping you know all, all the different uh, depart- areas that go into the, doing the job from start to finish from when the aircraft comes in to where it goes out completely refurbished I'm going to be completely novice about this now but you're, you're spraying enormous beasts 737 747s and bigger you you must be using a lot of those elevation equipment that gets you up into high places is, is there a lot of training in that well there would be yeah like in in some airports they use what's called docking it's similar to scaffolding but it's built around the aircraft and it's secured and it's as so you can it, it's a very good uh, system because you can access basically every single square inch of the aircraft without you know, being on um, platforms, and yet the only time you, time you would actually have to use the cherry pickers or the man lifts is if you're accessing the tail, which goes right up this because of the, the, the sheer height of the, the tail itself, or if there, if the case where there's two aircraft in the hangar, and there's no docking under the wings, so you access under the, underneath the wings and above the wings through man lifts and cherry pickers itself. But at all times you would be harnessed and on the safety lines at all times, you know. I call them beasts. Are these things majestic when you're up close to them? Um, <laughs> that's a hard one. Uh, they are big, like they're impressive. You know what I mean? Like as I say, no, nobody takes full stock when they're travelling and they're walking down the gangway to the aircraft or they're walking along the apron onto the aircraft. They just tend to the tendency to look at the aircraft, but they don't realise the sheer size and volume of the actual machine. Especially the airbuses, the wide bodies. They are absolutely massive. You know, and you can when you're standing under them, you can feel very, very small, especially beside the engines, which are just you know you can actually some of the engines you can actually go inside and stand up upright in front of the the, the fan. You know, so yeah, some of them can be very daunting at times, especially the seven four seven Dreamliners. You know, tell me again, how long was the course? The course was seven months, twenty nine weeks. In seven months, you you're gonna get every aspect during seven months. You're gonna are you get a certificate at the end? You do. You get a shooting skills uh, in aircraft surface finishing. So you do, uh, and it's well worth it because you have like we have eight modules, and each module is split into two: a theory and a practical, and you must pass them. You know, especially the safety and the health and safety is paramount. It takes up possibly five to six weeks at the start of the course. And it is paramount within the job and in the in the area. The hangar is a very very dangerous place, i.e. the chemicals, hazards, things like that. You know, machinery, people moving about, machines moving about, the docking, overhead hazards, anything debris falling, anything at all. So, health and safety is paramount, and they do emphasise that between ETB and IAC. It is very well thought out and put in place, and you have to do actually written theory and practical theory on that manual lifting and everything else. So it's well thought out, well. Uh, to get a course you know the, you mentioned all the the health and safety and the, the serious stuff there having done leaving cert and gone to the training center uh up at the airport uh doing a course was there good camaraderie was there good you know crack with the lads oh there was like you know you, you, you go in there like and you, you have a full class of 
people that don't know each other. Like I met up, I hooked up with two guys at the open day and we were waiting at McDonald's to wait to be brought in and uh, we sort of stuck it together after that throughout the course and one of the guys who's still there now in IAC working with me, we sort of like became good friends now inside of a year, you know, and uh, we communicate together. But yeah, overall, yeah, they're good camaraderie, good fun, good laughs had, you know. You basically were grown men, but you turn into school kids, I suppose, you know, antics and having a laugh at each other, setting each other up and winding each other up and that, you know. And then we were made feel very welcome by IAC itself and uh, the co-workers as well, you know. So you, you, you helped us to fit in, slot in very easily and made feel welcome. And they have no issues about training you or helping you, showing you little tricks and things like that as well, you know. So, yeah, it is good. Thanks, John, for filling us in on what it was like to become a trainee and then to graduate and, and get the job. To, maybe finally to Leon, uh, IAC... Uh, are there other companies doing similar things where they're they're getting sp- specific training for what they need in their company uh, through the training centres? Well, there's a lot of it in development at the moment. I, I suppose the model of training is changing as as the landscape changes. As you know, um, unemployment numbers are down. We're approaching full employment. You know, there's a lot of different types of training and education available to people that may not have been beforehand. So what we need to do is is is, is look at things and try to come up. Um, I suppose, more creative solutions. And one of those solutions would be to work more closely with industry in developing traineeships and, you know, programmes which lead specifically to a skill set so that people develop skills that are very, very relevant and required directly by industry. So that there's a, a really close match between, you know, what industry are looking for and what we're able to offer as a training centre so that people are developing skills, you know, which will make them directly employable. Brilliant. Uh, do you have a contact number or Facebook page that people can get in touch with? Yeah, we certainly do. Um, we have a very busy Facebook page. The Facebook page is Baldoyle Training Centre. Um, our phone number is 01 816 7400. Um, and we also have a website, um, which is www.dublintrainingcentres.ie. Leon and John, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Emil. Thank you. Baldoyle Training Centre podcast and now I'm going to move on to talk about the pharmacy sales course. It's an in-centre course here at Baldoyle and it runs continuously. I'm joined today by two of the participants in the current course, Erin Maughan and Kathleen Medill. Hello. Hi, how are you going today? Good. Uh, Kathleen, I'll go to you first. Um, What's your background? What were you doing before you decided to come onto this course here in Baldoyle? Well, I've just come home from Australia. I lived in Australia for 37 years and came home because kids are grown up. I'm on my own. I wanted to come home and stay at home now. Love being home. Love the wet weather. It's good for me. But this course is offering, it doesn't matter what your age is. It has no relevance. You've still got something to offer no matter how old you are. And you'll still learn something every day. So it's the enjoyment of actually taking stuff in and enjoying it, that, that's what I'm enjoying most. You went out to Australia, 81, 82 kind of time? 83. 83. 83, yeah, I was 22 years old when I went out, yeah. So that's about two or three years before we got Neighbours. <laughs> I know all about Neighbours. <laughs> I'm not telling you any secrets. And, and you're back and you, you want to contribute and you want to get yeah, back I, into the workforce. I have a lot still to offer. I'm still young. I'm only 60. I only turned 60. That's not old. Not in today's standards. And I have a lot left to offer. OK. Yeah. And I'll go to your partner in crime here today is Erin Maughan. How are you doing? Hello. And your background is? Uh, I just, I'm 18, so I just came straight from school up to here to get a few qualifications and everything. So I've never actually had a proper job before, so I thought this would be a good way to get something so I'd be more like confident in going to get a job in a pharmacy. How many weeks into the course are you now? Ten weeks today, exactly. Ten weeks today and how are you finding it? Yeah, it's really good. I really like all the people in it as well and it's not really, really hard either. So I've seen the the classroom down there it's set up like a pharmacy with all the the products and everything do you kind of do kind of a lot of mock run-throughs of people yeah, coming up play. yeah we do a lot of role play like one one will be behind the counter and one will be a customer and then we'll do scenarios on how things are going so you can be an obnoxious customer coming in and seeing how you'll handle it and you can be a lovely customer coming in and seeing how you handle it so it's given each of us experience 
on doing the role playing, which is necessary when you go into the workforce. And you cover everything, like you're selling the cosmetics and skin care, oral medication, taking in the prescriptions, uh, baby stuff, you know, so it's, it's so interesting. Like, we aren't able to actually, like, give tablets and actual medicine no. to them. That's the only other thing. We'd have to do another course after this. Right. And what's your favourite part of the course so far? I just like getting to know everybody because it's such, like, like I'm 18, so I'm literally, I'm the youngest person in the whole class. <laughs> and Kathleen's the eldest. And um, all of them are great. Like, it's really easy to talk to all of them. I was kind of nervous about it at the start because, but it's not that bad. So you're 10 weeks into a 36-week course, which yep. you'll go out on work placement. Are you looking forward to that? Very looking forward to that. I've, I've gone around to a few of the local chemists. I don't know whether to stay local or go wide. I think, you know, the experience that you have, your life experience and the course has given you so much confidence that you just feel you're ready for anything. So, yeah, it's a pretty exciting time. You say the course gives you confidence. Is, is that a surprise to you or did you think you'd get that kind of boost from the course? I think that's a surprise because I think with confidence is all about having the right information. So once you know you have the right information, which you're getting through the course, you're more confident. You come across more confident. You know what you're saying. You believe in what you're saying and that makes it real. Yeah. So whether you're coming straight out of school or back from Australia That's after 37 it. years, this course gives you qualifications as well. What, you get QQIs? Oh, yes, you get a certificate at the end from the Irish Pharmacist Union. Um, it's highly recommended throughout the country. It's, I think, I don't know whether it's in other countries as well, but you're more or less guaranteed of getting work once you have this. And it's OTC certificate as well, which is over the counter amazing qualifications to have absolutely amazing so you're learning you have good job prospects you're with a good crowd of people your teacher is amazing you can't ask for more you've you have 20 in a class and you're here in the baldoyle industrial estate in the training center i'm sure you're going to say yes to this but you recommend it to other people to inquire yeah definitely yeah without a doubt and it, it doesn't matter old young we have two lovely boys in our class as well and they're great you know so a lot of pharmacies want are looking for males to go into the the pharmacy line as well so interesting the mix the age mix is amazing because you have the old and the young and we're all getting on together and it's lovely it's a lovely atmosphere the guys um, really like it as well they like the course brilliant and a cheeky question then what's the canteen like here in Valdoa? Oh, pretty That's bloody amazing. It is really nice. The fries get a bit addictive, though. Yeah, you miss your fries in the morning when you're on holidays. Erin <laughs> and Kathleen, thank you very much. If you want more details on this course, you can ring the Baldoyle Training Centre on 816-7400 or you can get in touch with them on Facebook, Baldoyle Training Centre. Thanks very much, ladies. You're welcome. Thank Have a you. great day. Bye. At the Baldoyle Training Centre, there is a, an array of different courses and apprenticeship opportunities. I'm with Ross and Leon, who are on electrical instrumentation, and they're in phase two of seven phases. And uh, Ross, tell us, what is electrical instrumentation? All right, so it's a combination of two apprenticeships, really. Like, you have your basic electrical, which is your wiring in industrial and domestic, and your <coughs> your containment as well like which would be your trunk and tray conduit etc and your instrumentation side is your calibration of meters say flow or temperature etc like which would be more towards pharmaceutical stuff really that's basic build up of it leon tell us uh, in your class what are the job opportunities what where are people doing apprenticeships with what kind of industry are they coming in from well, than all, there's, there's a whole mix of lads from all over the country. There's lads that just do instrumentation. There's lads like us that are just doing industrial electrics. Lad, there's actually no lads doing domestic now, but there's job opportunities like abroad. There's pharmaceuticals, brewing, domestic, just wearing houses, whatever you like. So phase one is out on the job and you come through the training centre. Do they kind of source you that uh, job? No, you got to find your own apprenticeship. And then you get you get registered up with Solace and then just go from there sort of takes away. 
And this is uh, six months, your first time off the job, you're back in a training centre. Um, how are you finding it? It's, it's not too bad, like, bro. There is a good bit to do in the electrical instrumentation side of things. Like, electrical, like, it's more c- kind of handheld, like, from our instructor told us. But it is, it's a good bit, like, you have to get down into the nitty gritty and stuff like that. Like, you've, there's a lot of learning in it as well. But it's good trade at the end of the day. So on the job at the moment for you or the training part, which is the best pulls? Uh, on the job for me. And it's busy out there and it's also competitive to get onto the course, is it? Yeah, it is. Like you, There's thousands and thousands upon the apprentices out there now. Like It is like they're they're crying out for people out there, but like then to get in and then to be on the waiting list and to do like you have a three-month trial, you have to get through that and... Like once you get through that, like you should be fine. Like your employer will show you what to do and teach you. It's a good learning experience. What uh, qualifications will you get along the way do- doing this apprenticeship? Just the one at the end. There's there's no progress like progressive um, cert- certificates or anything like that. Look, but at the end you get your level six electrical instrumentation. You can actually go on and do a night course for two years, get a level seven or level eight. Whatever you look, there's there's a lot of room there for improvement. Look, you can you can add on to your qualification. You can go for your masters. Look, it doesn't just end after the four years. Like you can go on for so many years and stay going and stay going and stay going. Go on into teaching after even maybe. It it's busy at the moment out in industry. Uh, is it hard for them to to find time to let you go on the course, or is it fixed? It's contracted. You have to be a let go out onto the course. They can they can only I I. From what I kind of know, they can only hold you back once on each phase. And after that, yeah, they have to let you go. Your employer has to let you go. So they do. And as I say, there's seven phases. So you, after spending six months on phase two, go back to work in your respective industries. And then you come back again. You're looking forward to meeting up with everybody the second time? Oh, yeah, that most definitely. Yeah. You've missed the crack on Sayari. <laughs> Um, oh, you're you're thinking of meeting up with the people back in the job, of 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 course. Uh, by the sounds, you're not a dub yourself, are you? Then no, I, housing yourself up here in Dublin at the moment? No, myself and uh, another lad in the same course, we're kind of from around the same area, so we, we travel up and down every day. So we do. From where? From Barton Glass in Wicklow. Wow, that that that's some trek. Uh, you you like this course a lot? Oh, it's good. Yeah, I have a good like. I always consider myself like a hands-on kind of person, so I didn't really see myself going to college for four years. But at the end of the day, like you do have to go to college as well. Like there's only so much you can learn on site, whereas you have to learn the rest. Like you have to learn stuff in college as well. And Leon, yourself, what year would you be graduating from this course? Three years, maybe. Yeah, maybe twenty-one, twenty-two. I'd say that's a lot of investment in time, isn't it? Yeah. Well, look, it's it's a progressive apprenticeship. Look, so you start off on the basic wage. Each each year, your money goes up, 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 and then you get qualified. And then at the moment, the industry is booming. Look, so there's a lot of money there. And there's a lot of options. You can nearly pick where you want to go. Look, so. And just you, you mentioned finding that company yourself so that you could be an apprenticeship. Do you have to look, look up job advertisements, or do you, how, what way do you approach getting a company to be your sponsor? Um, there's a website, I think, Prenships.ie, they basically advertise every company that's registered with Solus. They they basically right. advertise all of those companies, so you can just go on there and you can check like their, their careers page. Or if you just know a local the local ad or someone in the family or whatever, like, you can just go. And do you have to interview for it then? Personally, I didn't. I just got a phone call, a few questions over the phone. Like. That was the same with me. Like, I just knew someone in the company. Well, I actually knew two people in the company that was high up and they just got me in. Just rang me and asked me do you want the job I said yeah just finally uh, would you recommend this to other people looking for apprenticeships and you know secondly what's the, the greatest thing that you found about being in the training centre like I'd recommend it to anybody not just lads in my age like, I'm only at school like two years two three years or so it's not necessarily a target a young lads like there's the money's there and there's like all the lads can get into it that's right look so I'd actually recommend it to everybody look it is really for all age groups. Like I'm, only, I'm only 21, and like I'm only two, nearly two years at this. 
But when I started my first day, I was actually started with a 45 year old first year apprentice as well. So it varies like you like I know people that are qualified carpenters as well and they've gone back to do electrical as well. It is it's good like it's a good trade. And then the the greatest thing about the training centre in Baldoyle is great canteen. Ross, Leon, thank you very much for your time today. Cheers. Thanks very much. Bro. Thanks, Ross. Thanks to all our guests on today's podcast. Thanks to you for listening. If you want more details about all the courses run at the Baldoyle Training Centre and courses are starting all the time and at staggered dates, you can check out the details at facebook.com forward slash Baldoyle Training Centre or at fetchcourses.ie. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye bye.